Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you all the puzzles that I completed for the month of October. And I have to say it was a pretty busy puzzle month. I got quite a lot done, so pretty happy about that. Um, I also managed to sneak in a few Halloween ones towards the end too, so that's great. Um, so all the puzzles I did are sort of a mix of puzzles from Instagram, uh, some from videos and some that I just felt like doing. And for each puzzle, I'll sort of give you my thoughts on like the experience and kind of just a little mini quick review on each one. And then at the very end of the video, I'll let you know which puzzle was my favorite and which was my least favorite. Also, if you're curious about any of the puzzles in this video, be sure to check out the description box below where I'll be leaving all the info for each puzzle. So I've just ended up grouping the puzzles uh, based on their brand. So if there's more than one of each brand, I've put those together. But apart from that, there's no real particular order. Um, and first up, we've got this stack here, although we've actually got a couple of invisible puzzles. So I've got a little poster note here, so don't forget them. So I've got a couple here that I borrowed off a friend, but I've since returned them. Um, so you'll see uh, in a minute pictures of, I guess, if I can fit them on the screen, the front of the puzzle box, as well as like the finished puzzle. So the first one is from Art and Fable and it was the Rootopia 1000 piece puzzle. Um, yeah, that was pretty fun to do. Uh, it was beautiful Art and Fable quality. So if you haven't done an Art and Fable before, the pieces have a really nice, um, like almost perfect piece fit. Sometimes there's some false fits, which I did have with this one because there's a lot of blue areas that look very similar. So there were a few false fits there, but yeah, the fit's very nice. Um, like pieces sort of just, fit in perfectly. I think you can usually pick up sections pretty easily. But the main thing that a lot of people love about Art Fable is the surface of the pieces is like this beautiful, they call it velvet touch. So it's like a buttery soft. I kind of think it's like a soft silicon kind of feel to it. But yeah, it's really nice. Most people seem to really like it, including myself. And the other bonus is that the surface is completely matte. It almost like absorbs the light. It's awesome. Like it's great for taking photos because you don't get any reflection whatsoever. So yeah, it makes puzzling a dream. Um, yeah, so as for the image of this one, I, even though it was quite, I guess, quite colorful and bright, it wasn't really my style, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. There was a lot of detail in it. Um, like I'd seen this design around before, but I just sort of never ended up getting it because it just wasn't quite my style, but I was happy to sort of, you know, be able to uh, try it out from my friend. And yeah, I thought it was, had some fun little details in there and almost a bit um, kind of an interesting mix of like almost like religious or cultural icons and ideas mixed in. Like it looked a little bit Buddhist and um, I don't know, like little all sorts of little interesting things going on. Like had a lot of gold statues and almost looked like Thai, Thai Buddhist temples or Cambodian temples, things like that. A bit of like an interesting mix of inspirations in the puzzle. So yeah, I thought it was cool, but it was sort of like a interesting cartoony style. Um, so yeah, definitely enjoyed it. Not my, again, even after doing it, I probably appreciated the image and artwork more, but it's still not my favorite kind of, I guess, color palette and style, but yeah, definitely glad I got to do it. And then the next puzzle that I have uh, on this post-it note, but not here, is was uh, lent to me by the same friend. So it's by an Australian company called Journey of Something. Um, and the puzzle is called Day Tripper and it's 1000 pieces. And this was a very sort of, uh, I guess, colorful, kind of past bright pastel colored abstract image, almost like a, look like some of it had been spray painted because it had like paint drips and sort of spray marks. And I don't really know what exactly it was of, like there's like a, from memory, an area in it, which almost looks like a big eye or something with eyelashes. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of different like textures and shapes and patterns and lots of different colors. Um, and it definitely grew on me. I definitely really liked it. Like, I think when I first saw that image again, it wasn't quite my favorite, but actually after like working on it, I really quite liked it. I especially liked the colors and I just thought it looked really cool in the end. And yeah, end up being, uh, ended up really kind of appreciating that artwork a lot more. And then yeah, as for the pieces, um, they aren't my favorite, but they weren't too bad. So they're a white paper backing. Um, and again, that's, I just am not a big fan of that, but the, they seem to be in good condition. They seemed fine. Um, they were like a medium thickness and quite like a smooth, uh, hard, like shelled sort of top, like a, you could like hit your nails on it, click, click kind of thing. 
like this. Um, but they were a little bit on the glossy side and the piece fit was pretty good actually. Like they hold together pretty snugly. You could sort of pick up sections for the most part. Um, but there were a few false fits as well, uh, but not too bad. Um, and yeah, yeah, you can move sections around. I think that was pretty much it. Um, yeah, it was, it was fine. Um, I don't think I'm ever gonna be the biggest fan of their pieces, but there wasn't really anything wrong with it. And yeah, overall enjoyed that one as well. So yeah, so they're the two that I don't have here. So that's those. And then next up, um, I did this really awesome Ebu puzzle. This one's called the Alchemist Home and it's 1000 pieces and it's actually a square puzzle. Um, and I just really had a great time doing this one. So um, Ebu actually have another puzzle they put out a while ago. I think it's just called the Alchemist Cabinet. And it's actually by the same artist who is called, <laughs> here we go, me and names, uh, Vasilisa Romane Romanenko. I tried guys um but uh yeah it's the same sort of art style and actually like that alchemist cabinet seems to sort of feature in one of these little rooms here anyway so i thought that was cool um anyway so this puzzle is basically like it reminds me of one of those sort of open cut dolls houses where you can see into all the rooms of the house and yeah so each room here has got like people well are they people though <laughs> um it's got individuals doing all sorts of different activities um, and each room is like a different kind of theme or different kind of room. So we've got downstairs, I guess, kind of like the sitting room and it's like very ornately decorated. It's kind of like an old style house. Um, so it's got some beautiful, yeah, there's just so many beautiful details and like even like William Morris style wallpaper and stuff. So every room is very interesting and decorated and patterned and stuff. But yeah, it's just, you know, we've got what sort of, I guess, a dining, oh no, like a lounge room. Then we've got a kitchen, a sort of reading room, which has the alchemist cabinet in it, a bathroom, like a little green room, greenhouse, like plant room, a kid's bedroom, and like a couple of other like bedrooms, some landing room, well, there's a spiral staircase. There's a room with like lots of little shelves. Then up in the top sort of attic part, we've got like a little sewing room some sort of interesting room with artifacts and maps, <laughs> a mad scientist lab. And then right at the top, you know, there's, um, what's this called? A telescope. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's like little birdhouses and verandas and things. But yeah, amongst um, all these like really cool rooms, there's all sorts of people doing stuff, but some of the people seem to be ghosts. So I actually ended up doing this one as a Halloween puzzle because yeah, it's even though it's very quite bright and colorful and quite a like, happy image and I, yeah, I really like it. Um, you've got little, I guess, ghost people who are a little bit transparent wearing old fashioned clothing sort of uh, mixed in amongst some actual real life, still alive people. Um, but yeah, I just think it's, a, I really like it. It's probably one of my favorite puzzles from Ebu. Um, yeah, so I think I've rambled on, a, on long enough about the image, love it. Fantastic artwork. Um, so as for Ebu pieces, um, if you've never done them before, they're, they're quite unique actually. They're very like extremely glossy, but they feel like glossy in a really beautiful varnished kind of way. They feel quite thick and like very sturdy and yeah, they feel like they're being varnished. They feel very like special. They're not just, so yeah. So it means that the pieces are glossy, so you will get sheen, but I think it almost makes the colors in their images pop more and it just, feels really beautiful like so I as much as I don't really like glossy pieces in puzzles I definitely make an exception for Ebu I think the quality of the pieces is very nice like they fit together nicely and they do have like a paper backing but the paper backing is never just plain white it's like usually glossy as well and has usually a bit of a pattern or something like they're a bit yeah they they put in a lot of like attention to detail I feel like um, and they don't really, really have puzzle dust from memory and the pieces seem to hold together pretty well um, I don't think there was a single false fit. And of course they have, yeah, beautiful artwork. So uh, yeah, if you've been thinking about an Ebu and you, you know, like this artwork, definitely recommend this one. I yeah, really enjoyed it. And then we have another teeny weeny little Ebu one here. Um, so this was actually uh, like gifted to me from one of my viewers in Canada, who's also like a Instagram or puzzlegram friend. Um, this is from the puzzles I've done. 
And yeah, it's just a really cute little mini Ebu puzzle, 36 pieces, um, what's it called, on the moon. And it's just, yeah, really cute. Um, it's kind of like a little vintage um, space scene, like the, the all these cute little fuzzy wuzzy animals on the moon. They've obviously landed in their very sort of, I guess like a 1950s era style or like what people in the 50s maybe thought space travel kind of looked like. It's sort of that idea of the future, but in the 50s, it's got that vintage style to it. So we've got the little spaceship there. And then we've got like what a badger, a little bunny, a little mouse and a squirrel with their little space. Oh, actually we've got an, another little mouse, I think as well, coming out of the spaceship. But they're all hard at work doing important astronaut space stuff with their little kind of bubble helmets. And yeah, and they're on the moon and there's earth there. And yeah, it's just really cute. Um, just a fun little one. Not too much to say about the quality, like it's fine. The pieces are big and they're kind of like the other puzzle. They're kind of like, sturdy and very glossy on top and have a cute kind of paper backing like I think it was like blue with little stars or something um, but yeah really really cute actually I'll just leave that one there so tiny um, and then the next brand we have some from uh, is Gallison so I did another teeny weeny puzzle which I think you saw me uh, talk about recently in one of maybe the last haul or the haul before that so this one is what's well, my mud puppy but that's like part of Gallison, so I guess it's more like Mud Puppy, I think is usually aimed more at kids, but they always have like the coolest designs, <laughs> including this one. And there's a whole bunch of these. So this is the Tokyo Mini Puzzle 48 pieces. And yeah, it's just a really fun kind of stylized, geometric, simplistic kind of little, I guess almost collage kind of thing, image of Tokyo. So it's got like all sorts of, even though the like different parts of the image are very like simple geometric patterns and stuff. It's like really jammed in into this small space. So yeah, it's got lots of cute things, obviously like um, temples and shrines and Mount Fuji, a bullet train, you know, like noodles or ramen, someone dressed in like a kimono, sushi, a little welcome cat, uh, Tokyo Tower, you know, all sorts of like really cute, very Tokyo things, I guess. And yeah, really colorful. And it was just a really fun, cute one to do. Again, very quick and easy. And um, I think the pieces are just like, actually, let's have a look. Cause I think I just popped them back in their little bag. Oh yeah, so they're like kind of big size, um, but they're just sort of pretty simple kind of white paper backing. And then the top's just smooth kind of cardboard or paper. Yeah, pretty matte actually. And yeah, pretty, they feel pretty sturdy. So, I mean, I'm not expecting too much from mini puzzles. They're just that, they're just a quick little fun novelty puzzle. I'm not really particularly bothered by their quality, but but still both of these puzzles were still pretty decent quality, even though they were just tiny little mini puzzles. So yeah, still pretty impressed. And then I've got a couple others here that I did from Gallison. So this one's a fairly recent one to my collection as well. This is Succulent Mosaic. 500 pieces and it, I don't know, who's it by? Um, Mia Charo, Mia Caro. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. I apologize. Um, but anyway, it's a beautiful square image and it's all these colorful, um, this sort of colorful succulent plant pattern or like a mosaic. But something that's a bit special about this one is it's got gold foil. So it's got like all the outlines of the plants are all in gold foil and it's just really, really, pretty. Um, I just thought it looked stunning putting this one together. And I was just like <laughs> annoyed though, because whenever I try to take photos, it, I just could never quite show how pretty the gold foil looked. So gold foil seems to be really hard to photograph, but yeah, take my word for it. It is very pretty, feels very luxe. Um, yeah. And I'm not, I like, I'm always a sucker for Gallison. I love their images. They always have the most beautiful artworks and designs, but I'm never a huge fan of their pieces. Um, this one wasn't too bad. It was actually like, sometimes I've had a lot of trouble with finding like bent or like damaged pieces, but I think this one was pretty good. I don't really remember it having too many quality issues. Um, but yeah, so the pieces in general with Gallison, um, I think these ones, are, like the 500 piece ones, they tend to be a bit sort of bigger and elongated. They have a white paper backing, which is not my favorite. 
Um, they're very like, I feel like Evo, I guess, they're sort of like uh, hard, like a bit of a hard, smooth surface um, and like medium thickness and very sturdy. Um, but I find they have a little bit of, usually a bit of sheen or glare, like a slightly glossy surface, not like Ebu shiny, but like, you know, not completely matte either. So you do get a bit of sometimes sheen on your puzzle pieces. Um, and they don't have any dust, which is great. They do actually hold together pretty well. Um, you can usually pick up sections sort of. Um, yeah, so they're not too bad, I guess, but it's just, I usually get annoyed because often I do find the pieces damaged, but actually I don't think there were really any in this one, which is great. Um, but yeah, I think overall this is a really beautiful puzzle and I just thought it was just stunning and had lovely colors and yeah, really glad to have done this one. And then we have here another Gallison one, which I've had in my collection for a while, but just never got around to doing it until now. So this one's called Paper Paradise. It's also a square 500 piece one. Um, and it's a really pretty one too. It's like a photograph of like all these plants and flowers, like these birds of paradise flowers. And it's really pretty, but they're all made from someone's actually got like cut out bits of paper or curled up little bits of paper and made everything out of paper. Hence the name Paper Paradise. And so it's a photo of that. And it's really clever. It's just really cool. I love the style. Um, so it's just, again, a beautiful image. And this is the same type of pieces as the previous one, except this one doesn't have the gold foil, of course. Um, and this one as well was actually in pretty good quality, like condition or quality. I didn't really have any damaged pieces from memory and you know, they fit, the pieces fit together pretty well, had a bit of sheen, wasn't any dust. So yeah, pretty good. Um, but yeah, I really like this one. I think, yeah, it's just a really lovely image. And I just think it's so clever that someone's like made all these flowers and plants out of like paper and layered them and curled them up. I think it's just a really interesting sort of thing. Like it's, it's clever. It's a cool skill. Um, so yeah, I really like this one as well. Just a beautiful image. And then the last one from this pile, so we've got a couple of other piles. We do have a fair few puzzles that I did this month, which is cool. So this is one of the Halloween ones I did. So this is by Mr. Bob Puzzles, which is an Australian company based in Western Australia. And this one is called Going Trick or Treating and it's 525 pieces. It's a wooden puzzle. Um, so yeah, they advertised this cute little Halloween design earlier in the year and I finally caved in and got it. Um, so the image is like, it's sort of got this little border of cute, smiling, grinning pumpkins and little spider webs. And then inside that is like, I guess these two kids sort of, one dressed as a witch and one as a ghost, just, yeah, we've got their little like pumpkin candy buckets and they look like they're out trick or treating, but they've come across a sort of spooky, ooky area where it's like gravestone or tombstones, a scary looking haunted house on the hill. There's a moon and there's like little witch and bats and there's like a scary black cat and an owl and they have glowing yellow eyes. Yeah, it's like, it's cute and spooky. So I thought that was pretty fun. Um, so yeah, Mr. Bob does wooden puzzles and they make everything in Australia, including even the artworks by an Australian artist as well. I don't know. Oh, here we go. It's by Alicia Rutigliano. Um, yeah, so I think that's cool that they try and do everything like locally, which is cool. Um, and they have very like chunky wooden pieces. Their wooden puzzles are four millimeters thick, which is some of the, uh, I think like one of the only brands of wooden puzzles out there that have like that thicker piece. Most are like a bit thinner than that. So yeah, pretty cool. And the other thing that's nice is you can choose when you like buy one of their puzzles online to have it infused with essential oils. So yeah, when this one arrived, it had a lovely like sort of essential oil, eucalyptus-y kind of fragrance. And also um, being a wooden puzzle, it had that like wood smoky campfire smell as well. Um, yeah, and all the pieces come in like a drawstring bag. And the other thing with this, and I guess most wooden puzzles is that the pieces are irregular, but amongst them you get very cute uh, whimsy pieces. So little fun shaped pieces. So this one had some very fun ones being Halloween. So there were like some pumpkins. So it was like a little witch on a riding on a broomstick, it was a bat, some ghosts, like a candle, what else? Um, a moon, um, like a howling wolf. Uh, like a skull, tombstone, like all sorts of really just cute. Oh, a cat. Yeah, really cute, fun 
Halloween shaped pieces. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think my only con with this one was um, I felt like the quality in this one wasn't as good as some of the previous uh, Mr. Bob ones I've done, like the ones I've done in a video, which I'll link up here. Um, I had a really great time with and thought were very excellent quality, but I found that even just after doing this once, by the end of doing, putting the puzzle together, some of the image had sort of chipped away or like come off some of the pieces like on the corners or the edge, I guess wherever there had been a bit of like friction or like hitting other pieces. And so you'd see a bit of white where the image was. Um, so yeah, that was like a little bit, I guess, disappointing. And also the image didn't feel like it was the highest quality, like as in it felt a little bit fuzzy, maybe like not the sharpest quality, um, which sort of surprised me because obviously if they're working with the artist, you think that they would be able to get a like really high print quality image, but I don't know. And I'm not exactly sure why it is that this particular image, how it was printed on the pieces didn't seem to be like as I guess sturdy as a nice as a quality as like some of the other ones I've done from them. So yeah, that was just a little bit disappointing, but still overall a very cute and fun Halloween puzzle. Um, so that's it from this pile. So let's go through the next pile. So let's go through the next lot of puzzles. So I've got one here from uh, the Canadian brand Two Bird Press. And I've actually done a puzzle, puzzle from them previously, which I'm pretty sure I did a video on. So if I can find that, I'll link that at the top. Uh, so this one's called Anthea's Crown and it's a 1000 piece puzzle. Um, and it's just a yeah really beautiful, uh, lovely kind of painterly image of, well, Anthea, who's like, I think it's from, she's from Greek mythology. I'm not exactly sure what she's the goddess of, but I'm guessing nature and flowers and something like that. Um, Sorry, I don't know my Greek mythology, but anyway, it's a really beautiful image, just very sort of screams spring and it is spring here in Australia at the moment. Um, yeah, all these, she basically has this giant head of flowers, like this beautiful giant crown or her hair is flowers. And it's just, yeah, all these blossoming like roses and other sorts of things. And then she even has like a flower sort of necklace and, um, and even behind her, like the background are like, flowers and leaves and things so yeah it's just very beautiful a uh, very sort of busy design it was quite challenging to put together um yeah so the artwork's very lovely i don't usually go for a lot of painterly style images but i just thought it was just be like beautiful colors and it's just overall a very gorgeous image um yeah it's just really pretty but yeah it was challenging to put together just because it was more of a painterly style so when you're looking at the pieces close up you know you're seeing sort of more abstract paint strokes rather than like an actual flower or something like that. So yeah, definitely tricky, but well worth it because it looked stunning in the end. And yeah, the pieces are really nice. Um, so they, if you've ever done the brand Grateful House, I'm pretty sure they're like maybe made by the same manufacturer. Um, so they're almost, they're either like, I don't know if they're exactly the same, but they're very, very similar. So I think if you enjoy Grateful House, you'd enjoy this brand as well um, but yeah the pieces are a gray board sort of like a medium thickness they fit together perfectly um, this one had a fairly smoothish surface like a very subtle like um, linen sort of uh, finish like that little kind of those little cross hatch kind of finish but like very very subtle is more smooth than anything and fairly matte not very much sheen or anything um, barely any dust, if any, um, what else? Yeah. So, and pieces uh, like sections hold together quite well. Yeah. Just overall beautiful piece quality. Just really nice, really a pleasure to puzzle with. So yeah, definitely really enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, just a beautiful puzzle. And then we've got some more dark, uh, spookier images here. So I did a couple of these one. I did this one in a video actually just recently. So I'll pop that up the top as well. So this and the next puzzle are from Flipsy Puzzles. Um, and they first released these puzzles as a Kickstarter. And what they are is they're like 500 pieces, but they're double sided. And one side of the puzzle is the image you see here, which is pretty kind of spooky and creepy. It's like a, you know, very dark kind of dramatic, spooky foresty scene and you it's like you're in the forest looking out into like the ruins of some old castle it's like you know cracked brickwork and everything looks a bit dark and spooky and creepy and then on the other side is a surprise image so 
Um, in the video, you'll see, you won't see me show you the surprise image because that's a secret, but you will see my reaction to it. And I can assure you it was pretty, it was uh, it's pretty spooky, pretty creepy, not what I expected, definitely took me by surprise. I was definitely nervous opening up the surprise side because I had no, no idea what to expect. But yeah, it was pretty fun and creepy and very cool artwork. So yeah, definitely if you like surprise puzzles and you want some scary ones, or you want some for next Halloween or something, definitely recommend these, they're pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so this one is called Haunted Castle. I think I forgot to mention that. And um, yeah, so the piece quality, um, the pieces are like quite nice and thick. Um, they fit together pretty well. They feel like, yeah, quite sturdy. Um, and the top is like pretty, hang on, what is the top like? Let's open it up. I've done so many puzzles this month. I honestly can't remember. Oh, that's right. So it comes in a resealable Ziploc bag and has a little poster as well. So that was cool. Um, yeah, okay. So the top's fairly matte and it has like that little linen, matte linen finish type texture on it. So that's cool. But yeah, so the back of them, of course, is a paper backing, um, which I don't normally like, but obviously it makes complete sense in this instance because it needs to print the surprise image on something. So they've, it does have a paper backing, which is really different to the top. It's like very smooth and it does have a bit of sheen. So there's definitely no mistaking when you're putting this together, you can quite easily tell which is the top side and which is the surprise image side. So definitely didn't have any problems there, but yeah, um, it's yeah, quite a nice medium thickness and they were just, yeah, pretty nice, nice quality pieces. Um, I did have a couple of false fits especially in this one not really so much the other one i think because there's just so many like a lot of very dark areas in this particular image and also a lot of these like kind of autumn type leaves are very similar looking in multiple areas so there were actually some false fits um but not too many just like a few um and yeah there's like basically no puzzle dust um yeah so overall like quite impressed with the brand i think they're quite nice quality um, and it's such a fun concept. It's like not really wouldn't normally be my thing, um, but Flipsy very kindly sent these to me and I'm really glad I got to try them because they were like really fun. And yeah, I think, um, you know, I definitely recommend these to anyone who wants something just a bit different and fun and spooky for Halloween or any time of the year. And I'm really hoping that because um, there's three in this series and that's the, all they've put out at the moment. I'm, me and I think quite a lot of other people are really hoping that they might release either more spooky ones or even some sort of other theme that has like a surprise image on the other side. I think that would be really cool. Um, yeah, so definitely recommend these. I thought it was just a really fun, well-made puzzle. And then I did another one from them, which is the Haunted Farmhouse. And I did this one over on Instagram, so you can go and check that out if you're interested. Um, and again, uh, all the same positives as the last one, like nice fitting pieces, no dust, comes in the resealable bag, has a little reference picture. Um, yeah, and the artwork on both sides is very cool and very well done. Um, this side's like quite a spooky, kind of beautiful actually. I really like the purpley kind of stormy sky. It looks quite pretty, but it is a bit spooky and creepy. Definitely doesn't look like the sort of farmhouse that you'd go to for help if your car broke down in the middle of nowhere. I think you'd be like, I'll just walk to the next one. It's fine, thanks. Um, and I definitely feel that way after seeing what the surprise side was on <laughs> this puzzle. It was very scary. I, for me personally, it was more scary than the uh, haunted castle. Um, so it was pretty creepy. It was very scary. I didn't like looking at it for too long. Um, so yeah, definitely a spooky, perfect for Halloween kind of puzzle. But yeah, I just think um, these are yeah really good fun. Just, yeah, great if you want a spooky surprise. So yeah, really enjoyed this one as well. And then next we've got a little 500 piece one here from Badge Bomb. Um, and this puzzle is called Catitude and by, it's by the artist Gemma Coral. I think that's how you say it. And it's just a really, I got a few from Badge Bomb because I like, they have just really fun designs and they have a lot of cat ones, which is of course all the ones I got. And this is one of them. Um, and this one's just really fun. It's just all these little, like a crowd of cats all pulling different expressions. Um, some saying like sassy little comments. 
So one says, in your dreams. So one says, nope, meh, go away, shut up, no way, no. So, catitude. Um, one even has like a little leather jacket on it says, nap life. Um, and then there's some cats that are a bit uh, interesting. One has three eyes and one has five eyes. Um, but they're all just really cute sort of pastel colors like mint and pink and purple. And it's just a really fun, cartoony, cute little image. Um, and I was really quite impressed with the quality of this too, actually. Um, they kind of reminded me, like if you've ever done like four point puzzles, something like that, kind of reminded me of that. Um, so the pieces are like kind of a thin to medium thickness. They're a little bit probably softer or like not super bendy, but um, you know, a little, little bit soft, like, um, and then they have a gray board, but the fit is really nice. They fit together very well, like pretty much perfectly. Um, I think from memory, I could hold like sections together pretty well. Um, there wasn't really much dust at all. I don't think. And I think the top is just smooth. Let's, let's see. Yeah, it's just a smooth, but it's kind of a fit. It's a smooth surface, but it's, it doesn't have too much sheen. It's somewhat matte. Um, yeah, just sort of nice, interesting. Yeah, the pieces are sort of some interesting shape pieces too. They almost remind me a little bit of some of those Seiko sh piece shapes, but unlike Seiko, this one actually fit together very nicely and didn't have copious amounts of puzzle dust. So it's definitely, yeah, really impressed with this brand. And I've got like, I think three other cute cat ones from them. So I'm definitely excited to try those. So yeah, if I guess if you've been thinking about trying them, I definitely would recommend giving them a go because got super cute colorful designs and yeah nice nice piece quality so yeah really like that one and then last one from this pile we have one more pile after this is a puzzle that was gifted to me from wooden city um, and i believe they're based in poland um, but i think they ship sort of worldwide but they're a they do wooden puzzles but they also do like kind of wooden 3d models and things like that and i think like um like wooden map type puzzles but they asked me would I like to try one and to pick a design so I actually saw um, a fellow YouTube slash Instagram puzzle friend Jeanette and her puzzles she actually did the same design so I'll link her video up here as well if I can or maybe down below you'll find it somewhere um, and you can see her experience um, and her video doing this puzzle um, whereas I just did this one over on Instagram um, but yeah this one is it's kind of weird, it says 500 plus five pieces, but it's 505 pieces. Um, and yeah, it's this beautiful um, tiger puzzle, it's called, I think it's called just, yeah, Mystic Tiger. Um, and it's just, I just thought, it's, I think it's one of their most beautiful images. I mean, they have a lot of really nice images, to be honest, but this one, when I saw it in Jeanette's video, I was like, that is stunning. And when they asked me what I wanted to try, I was like, can I try this one, please? It looks really pretty. And I just love, yeah, the white tiger with its like, beautiful sort of like gems and feathers and flower sort of headdress. It's just very beautiful. Like it's got like lots of pinky purple flowers and like feathers and like jewels and gemstones. And it's just really pretty, just a beautiful illustration. Um, and then one of the things that this company sort of prides itself on is being a bit more environmentally friendly in the sense that they are plastic free. So this whole puzzle comes in like this little kind of, what do you call it, like corrugated cardboard box. Um, didn't have any like plastic wrap at all. I think it just came sent to me inside another cardboard box. So, and then even when you open it, uh, 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 there's no plastic packaging either. You get, it's like a, your puzzle pieces come in like almost like a little paper lunch bag, like a little doggy bag. And then you just get a little, uh, you, you do get a little mini reference picture, which is mine's very uh, crumpled, just excuse that. Um, but I guess that's probably my main con with this puzzle is that you don't get a bigger image to work with. That's as big as you get and not what's on the box, but, um, but it's not a big deal. It was still perfectly doable. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this puzzle. I just thought it was a really nice wooden puzzle. Um, so the other special thing with this particular wooden puzzle, it comes with a huge amount of whimsy pieces. So it's got, it says 80 unique whimsy shapes. And I can assure you that it really does have like 80 or at least a heap, way more than most wooden puzzles have. 
it sort of has a little sample on the side um, but if you see go over to my Instagram you'll see um, some pictures showing some of the whimsy pieces but yeah there's all sorts they're all different like animals and insects so there's like um, you know like wild cats it's a turtle I think there were cats dogs a spider um, yeah just all sorts of like different I guess animals and insects and things birds and things like that um, but yeah I just thought it was really well done the quality seemed very nice um, pretty decent thickness I don't know if it says what thickness it is um, I feel like it was like three millimeters around about that it wasn't as thick as like Mr. Bob but it they were definitely a very reasonable thickness so they didn't they didn't skimp the pieces seemed very like yeah and like nice quality there wasn't any like chipped bits nothing broke um, the image seemed to be printed very well onto the wood yeah just I think a really nice brand I'm really glad I got to try them um, and yeah I just think it's just yeah they have some beautiful images um, lots of whimsies nice that's plastic free and yeah like other wooden puzzles it has that sort of smoky wooden smell as well so you have to be okay with that some people aren't don't like that smell so if you don't like it that's probably wooden puzzles probably aren't really for you but um, but if you don't mind it yeah this definitely check out this brand I think they're really just a really nice brand so yeah super glad I got to try them out as well so let's move on to our last pile of puzzles okay so let's go through the last lot of puzzles that I did for October so I did this beautiful uh, pomegranate puzzle 1000 pieces by the artist Daniel Merriam and it's called Bubble Street and uh, this one I've had in my collection and sort of wish list for a long time so super glad to finally be doing it and yeah it's just this gorgeous sort of pastel very dreamy image um, it's sort of like almost makes me think of like those houses in San Francisco a little bit um, but yeah kind of or that house in that Ebu puzzle looks a bit old-fashioned and lots of different rooms and things but yeah it's all these beautiful houses and um, and then there's like trees and people doing things like kids riding bikes someone on a swing you know it just generally looks like a normal neighborhood but it's not there's like all these like um, weird things going on like even the houses have little intricate very lacy like almost like fine detailed lace work like ornate decorations on them and there's like well the reason why it's called bubble street is just because the image is filled with bubbles like there's all these sort of glass bubble orbs floating around all different sizes um yeah it's really, really bizarre and then things get weird like there's like a giant bird up here and then you notice the more and more you like look at this puzzle image you notice weird things like the tree uh trunks have like faces in them so there's like a screaming face and a face with a bubble in its mouth and sleeping faces and it's kind of a bit creepy actually maybe this should have been a halloween puzzle it's beautiful but also a little bit disturbing and creepy like there's sort of odd things and then there's like weird things down here like someone's it's part of someone's face and they're holding like a jar full of liquid and there's a frog in it but the frog has like wings <laughs> So there's sort of all sorts of little oddball oddities and yeah it's just a really interesting style but yeah it's very beautiful super ornate and intricate and stunning and pomegranate have quite nice quality their pieces are like a sort of usually a medium thickness with the gray board uh, the pieces fit together quite nicely i think there was a little bit of dust um, their puzzles come in like a resealable ziploc bag which is great i don't think there was a poster or was there i can't remember um, but yeah the piece fits pretty nice you can pick up sections like move sections around yeah there is a little bit of dust um, they have like quite a smooth with like a subtle linen finish texture but and like fairly matte I think this had like a smidgen of sheen but it wasn't too bad but I have to say though the one thing that bothered me with this puzzle is like actually the sort of really defined piece shapes so there's something about I don't know if it's on all pomegranate puzzles but probably but I really noticed it in this image because it's such a pale image is that the way the pieces go together they end up looking like the piece shapes end up being very defined and almost dark like maybe it's just a bit of shadow that gets created between each piece or something like that but like you can really see each piece shape very well defined 
and that kind of I felt like detracted from the image a bit like it's almost like it it almost took center stage or it took the focus off the beautiful sort of pastel soft image and made the image a little bit hard to see actually so yeah I felt like that was a little bit frustrating um, and I had never really thought of that as ever being an issue before but I just I guess I just hadn't really had that problem with any of their other puzzle images but I think because this is so detailed and so soft and dreamy um, it really gets affected by that sort of defined piece shape anyway but apart from that I really loved it I'm still really glad that I did this puzzle and have it in my collection I think it's just a beautiful image and I still really love the pomegranate piece quality and then we've got a puzzle here from the Australian brand called Reverie Puzzles um, and they do a lot of sort of fantasy book related sort of puzzles and this one's called Folk Tale, Ta Folk Tale Town that's really hard to say and it's just a really this one's a really cute bubbly uh, colorful pastel image it's just yeah this sort of fantasy little town um, it's got really cute buildings so there's the uh, the talking cats bakery with a little little cat in the window and cute little baked goods and then it's the bookstore next door called I like big books and I cannot lie and we've got little cats jumping up there and we've got the elder library and we've got the Sven and Sons apothecary and monster handling and there's a dragon sitting outside um, you've got a museum, you've got the Trolls Do Not Pass bridge, you've got some little other flying deer and a Loch Ness monster and I think a little mermaid tail. So it's like all sorts of very cute little fantasy elements and but it's just such a cutesy design like the art style is very cartoony and cute. You, you basically can't be sad doing this puzzle, it's so cheerful and bright and colourful. Um, yeah and so the uh, quality of Reverie is very nice like it's very luxe, the box is nice and the pieces come in like a beautiful drawstring bag um, and it comes with like a reference picture card so it's quite nice. Yeah, just a really nice quality. Um, and the pieces are like uh, grey board backing, they fit together quite nicely. I th quite snug though because I do remember having a bit of trouble actually <laughs> trying to undo the puzzle to pack it away. I had to do a bit of wiggling so they're maybe quite more on the firm or snug side. Um, but it means you can pick up sections and I guess do a puzzle pick up pretty easily. Um, I don't think there was much dust um, and the surface is pretty smooth but fairly matte, a bit, a little bit like Magnolia puzzles where you feel like it should be more glossy but it's not. Um, but yeah overall very nice, just a beautiful brand and they have like lots of lovely images and I really enjoyed this one and looking forward to doing more from them as well. And then we've got uh, one here from Antelope Puzzles and it's called uh, Amsterdam Weekend 1000 Pieces and it's by the like it's part of the Lin Wang collection so the artist is Lin Wang and again it's a very colorful fun beautiful cheerful uh, I guess interpretation of Amsterdam I'm sure well, I've been to Amsterdam and I don't remember it being quite this bright and colorful it was very gloomy when I was there um, but you know it's a fun interpretation of it and definitely looks like it's in spring or summer yeah lots of colorful Amsterdam style buildings and then people outside enjoying the sun and the park and yeah people all sorts of like yeah it's basically like a I guess yeah all different Amsterdam buildings and then people all out and about doing different activities dog walking skateboarding there's a cat sitting on a roof people enjoying the park, someone on their laptop, someone being proposed to, someone playing a guitar. Yeah, it's just really fun and cheerful. Um, and I've done um, a puzzle from them before and I quite enjoyed it. I think I actually did a video on that too. Let's see if I remember and link that up the top as well. Um, and their pieces are interesting because they have a white paper backing, which is again, not my favorite, but um, doesn't seem to affect their quality too much. Their pieces actually fit together very nicely. Um, you can pick up sections, yeah, like a pretty good fit. Um, and what else? Um, not really any puzzle dust, I don't think. The pieces are like medium thickness, pretty sturdy. And again, they have quite a smooth but fairly matte surface as well. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, they're pretty nice actually. Um, yeah, nothing real, no real complaints. Yeah, so just enjoyed this one. I just thought it was a lovely, fun image. And then we've got a 
beautiful puzzle here from a fairly new Australian brand and they sent me uh, all three from their latest collection. So the brand's called Country Stories and uh, this particular puzzle is, well one, it's um, 1,024 pieces so it's actually a square and it's by the artist Ruth Spencer but it doesn't actually have a particular name of the artwork that I could find. Um, but it does have a whole story attached, which they put on the back, which is really nice. But anyway, the main thing about this brand and their puzzles and the artwork is the brand is, um, well, it features artwork from Australian Indigenous or Aboriginal artists. And so it works closely with artists from different like communities across Australia. And then all the sales they make from selling puzzles and they also sell I think like the actual artworks as well like in their gallery um, all the royalties from the sales go back to the artists so and their community and so yeah it's, I think it's a really nice idea and nice that they're sort of working closely collaborating with the Aboriginal artists and yeah the artworks they have on each of the puzzles and even like their other artworks are just beautiful stunning so yeah I thought this was just a beautiful one it does have this isn't actually the whole image it has like the image on the back and it's like a massive poster included like it's actually a really nice a beautiful quality puzzle like the box is really nice packaging's very beautiful has um the full name of the artist and where they're from here and like the whole story on the back comes with like a beautiful big poster um a lovely like fabric drawstring bag so very luxe um and yeah beautiful aboriginal artwork which i think is really yeah just gorgeous um the pieces are probably not my favorite but they weren't too bad so they're more on the thinner side and they are like a gray board or cardboard backing um, but they I guess there's a few cons of the pieces um, so they're quite glossy on top like a smooth a fairly shiny surface which wasn't too too bad actually but it depends on your lighting I guess the fit is a bit on the loose side and then the other thing with the pieces is they're all just like I mean apart from edges two tap so there's not really much piece variation although surprisingly um I didn't have there were a few false fits but not as many nowhere near as many as I was expecting I thought oh there's going to be heaps of false fits because there's just no piece variation but really actually there was you know like just a few there weren't too many um yeah but apart from that the image is beautiful but it was pretty challenging to put together it's just all this beautiful like dot work but that makes it pretty challenging. Um, but I got there in the end and I, it really looks stunning. So was quite impressed. Um, yeah, so I guess maybe the pieces aren't the highest, like they're not bad, but they're not like my most favorite. Um, and they maybe could be done more nicely to sort of match how nice the box is and everything. But, but overall, I still had a great time and I'm looking forward to doing the other two that they sent me. And I think overall the concept and them working with Australian Indigenous artists is really great. So yeah, I think definitely a brand to keep an eye out on. And um, yeah, they have just beautiful puzzles. And we've just got a couple left here. Um, so we'll do that one last. Um, so I did one from Ravensburger. This is 1000 pieces and it's called Vintage, Vintage Summer Garden and it is by Amy Stewart and it's I guess one of her shelf or sort of vintage book series and I'm so glad that they made this 1000 pieces because it's just stunning. Um, so uh, Ravensburger I think have like it's like the Christmas library puzzle by her which is 1000 pieces but they have quite a few other like uh puzzles from this series but they a lot are 500 pieces like i think there's like vintage library the travel book one there's a cookbook one but they're all i'm always like i feel like 500 pieces is like a bit of a pity because i feel like it doesn't quite showcase all the detail and like book covers and everything like there's so much detail going on so yeah the image is just stunning lovely vintage retro style uh lots of books to do with gardening and plants and spring and insects and things um, and yeah all these beautiful book covers so like what do we got here garden flowers um, flower fairies uh, the honeybee uh, a stroll in a garden uh, cottage rose garden and so on lot yeah so many beautiful like vintage sort of book covers and they're just very 
beautifully illustrated and even though it's sort of like a vintage style like puzzle the colors like there's a really beautiful sort of mix of really vibrant rich colors and then more sort of pastel-y colors so it's yeah it's really beautiful everything stands out and then of course amongst all the bookshelves and um, books there's like an abundance of flowers and little insects and yeah like it's just really pretty like we've got butterflies ladybirds dragonflies and then all sorts of flowers bees yeah it's just a beautiful i think this is definitely one of my favorites in my collection now i think it was just a stunning image and then as for the quality um it's sort of your classic ravensburger quality so lots of dust an abundance of dust um but it's the sacrifice we make to do uh, ravensburger puzzles i guess and then you know nice sort of medium thickness blue board puzzle pieces that fit together well the tops like not too glossy like reasonably matte maybe a tiny bit of sheen pieces fit pretty nicely together although i don't know i sometimes like find some ravensburger pieces fit more snugly than others this one was like if you were gentle you could pick up sections but they were a little bit crumbly so uh, but overall still very nice feeling pieces and it's i always find like their pieces interesting i never find them to be completely like flat on the top they always feel a little bit like almost padded or something which i don't mind i just think it's sort of a bit of an interesting thing that you get with ravensburger pieces like they how do they yeah it's let's open this up and have a look yeah well, i mean i guess they look fairly smooth but maybe it's something about how the edges of the pieces are done like it almost feels a little bit never like completely flat when the puzzles together not in a bad way just in an interesting way i guess um yeah but overall though a very beautiful puzzle and nice quality um pretty standard ravensburger quality but yeah really love the image i just yeah totally in love with it and then the last puzzle that i did during october is this adorable vintage springbok puzzle um i did a video on this as well so i'll link that at the top there's a lot of videos linked at the top hopefully they all fit um, this one was sent to me as well by the puzzles i've done who's in canada and you can find her blog and her instagram which i'll try and pop on the screen actually so you can go follow her um, she actually does uh bl not vlog but blogs about all sorts of interesting puzzles including a lot of vintage puzzles so definitely worth checking her out she does a lot of interesting stuff so yeah and so she sent me this and this is the kitten caboodle um vintage springbok puzzle it's sort of we worked out it's kind of from the early to mid 80s um, and it says over 500 pieces so <laughs> make of that what you will 500 and a bit um, yeah so I did a video on this and um, really interesting like I compared pieces from this with like a more recent spring block that I have that's from like the last couple of years and these are definitely like way chunkier like super thick chunky pieces that are quite they fit very snugly together um, yeah and they still have all the same kind of quirky irregular piece shapes that the modern ones do but they're just much thicker and yeah um interesting but it was so the image i should probably go back to the image the image is this very cute whimsical very kitsch kind of painterly 80s 70s style of these like fluffy floofy kittens and then they're it's a basket of kittens basically there's like all these kittens in this basket with a pink blanket and now like after doing the puzzle i realized like i think this darker colored kitten is actually well it's much bigger than the others so I guess that's not a kitten, although it looks kind of small too. I don't know, is that like mama cat? I don't know, but either way, they're all cute and fluffy. And it was just a very cutesy kitsch puzzle to do. I enjoyed it, but it was really hard. <laughs> it took me like three and a half hours or something to do this, like a crazy amount of time for a five over, sorry, over 500 piece puzzle. Um, I think because there's so much brown in it and fur is really hard like it's fur becomes really painterly and abstract looking when you are up close so yeah it was definitely a tricky one to put together but it was a lot of fun really glad to have had the experience to try it um you know spring rock puzzles are pretty hard to get here in australia as it is like especially just like the current recent ones i pretty much have to order them from amazon or uh, i guess like a us website or something 
you can't just find them in stores here. And so of course, trying to find a vintage one here is probably even more difficult. Um, so yeah, I was really excited when uh, the puzzles I've done to, you know, offered to send me this. So yeah, really glad to try it. Um, and really enjoyed the pieces. Although, I mean, they are like, I guess Springbok pieces aren't my favorite in the sense that they're quite glossy or shiny on top, like smooth, but I do really, I did really enjoy how chunky and thick these were. So yeah, it was definitely, it may not be my most favorite pieces, but I really just enjoyed the overall experience of it. I think it was just a bit of a unique, really interesting experience. So that's probably what I liked more and the cute image and everything. Um, so yeah, so that is everything for the month of October. So now let's go look at my favorite and least favorite puzzles for the month. So I'm doing things a little bit differently. Normally I'd pick a favorite and least favorite, but I actually just didn't really have any puzzles that were my least favorite. I really had a great time with pretty much all the puzzles. There were none that really stood out to me as being really bad quality or that I really disliked. I just really had a great time and enjoyed everything. Um, so instead I've decided to pick my top two favorites for the month of October. So first I chose this beautiful Mystic Tiger puzzle from Wooden City. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a really nice quality puzzle. Love the image, had a great time with all the little whimsy um, creatures or critters in there. I thought it was, yeah, just really well done. I like that it was like zero plastic as well. Something I forgot to mention actually when talking about this, even though I rambled on about lots of other things, I failed to mention this, that the reverse side of the pieces has actually got a beautiful like uh, floral kind of pattern on it. So it's not just plain wood, it's like printed black flowers and vines on it and leaves. So yeah, kind of an interesting touch. I've never really seen that on any other wooden puzzles. So I thought that was like just a really neat kind of extra fun, unique thing about it. So yeah, so that's kind of cool too. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a beautiful puzzle and I just think they have really nice quality puzzles and lots of fun with the whimsy pieces and yeah, just fun, great quality, beautiful. So that's why that was one of my favorites. And then another one that was one of my favorites is this gorgeous vintage summer garden, uh, kind of vintage book puzzle from Ravensburger. I just love Amy Stewart's artwork. I can, I can never go past one of her puzzles. I always think they're just stunning and beautiful. And I just absolutely fell in love with this image. Um, even though sometimes there's certain aspects of Ravensburger quality that bug me like the dust and maybe the pieces in this one didn't hold together as well as some of the other puzzles. Overall, it was just still a nice quality puzzle, but the image itself is what really like, I guess, won me over. I just, just think it's so beautiful. Just really loved it. And I don't think this one's ever leaving my collection. It's definitely one of my favorite puzzles, I think. So yeah, I just really loved it. And I just think both of these were just stunning, gorgeous, beautiful puzzles, pretty good quality, um, and just really had a great time doing both of, both of these. So that was all the puzzles that I completed for the month of October. I think I did quite a few and quite an interesting mix of puzzles. We had some very teeny weeny cute mini puzzles, uh, you know, and sort of more normal size, regular puzzles, even some wooden puzzles. And I kind of enjoyed that there was like lots of very pretty, colorful, pastely floral puzzles then kind of mixed in were some contrasting like dark creepy spooky ooky surprise halloween puzzles so i thought that was pretty interesting so in the comments below let me know what you thought of the puzzles i did for the month of october were there any here that you also did and let us know what puzzles you enjoyed doing during october if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love and for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.